What's up guys, today we're going to be taking a look at a very exciting new paddle, the Ben Johns Hyperion CFS 16mm. Ben Johns has officially moved over to Yola as his paddle sponsor and they are creating his new signature paddle, so let's take a look and see how it stacks up against the competition. For the specs of this paddle, it comes in at $220 and we are looking at an elongated face with a curved top, which Yola is calling the Arrow Edge. A 5.5 inch handle, a carbon fiber face that they are calling the carbon friction surface, hence the CFS in the name, polymer core, 4.25 inch grip circumference and a 16 millimeter paddle thickness. Overall, these specs are very similar to the Carbon One paddle. If you hold up a Carbon One to the Ben Johns, they're nearly identical in size and shape, except for the arrow curve section where you have slightly less hitting surface, but we really aren't talking about losing much here. One of the biggest comments I have had from people who have seen the paddle in person is that they go and say, the hitting surface looks really small. So it's interesting how just the impression of looking at it makes it look so small, but when you hold it up to something, it's really not that different. And for the grip, they're using this white ribbed grip, which I've never been a fan of these, but for some reason, this one is slightly tackier and I don't mind it as much. I still wouldn't choose it and I'm definitely gonna put an overgrip on it, but it's way better than I expected. I could play with this and probably not really care that much. The one thing I will say though, is I wish they hadn't chosen the color white because after just two play sessions, this thing already looks like it needs to be replaced. The weight is something I've seen quite a few comments about online. I've seen this range from 8.2 ounces all the way up to 8.6 ounces, and mine personally came in at 8.4. The weight doesn't really bother me, but my Model E is weighted up to 9.2 ounces. So to me, this is just lighter than what I'm used to, which is kind of nice. But if weight is a concern of yours, then just know that this is definitely on the heavier side of paddles, and the balance seems to be shifted more towards the heavier than the handle, which can also make it feel heavier than it actually is. As far as the face goes, it feels nearly identical to the Electrum, Carbon, and Engage surfaces that we're all used to by now. Which leads us perfectly into the spin category. So far, this paddle has been fantastic. For myself, I got 1584 RPM and Patrick got 1764 RPM. And these numbers put this paddle in a high tier of spin and definitely on the upper end of the high tier spin paddles that I've tested. There was definitely a noticeable improvement on my drive with this paddle compared to my Model E because of the additional spin. I could hit the ball harder and not really worry about it going out because I knew that the additional spin would help it come back in. The one thing I will say is that I do need to dial in my serves a little bit more. I think because this paddle has more power than the Model E, which we'll get to more soon, my serves were going about three to four inches long, which was kind of frustrating. But again, I think that's just because I need to get used to the additional power that I'm not used to having. But other than that, the additional spin over my Electrum was really nice for rolls and drives. Really happy to see this thing perform so well because I was a little worried that it was going to underperform. As far as the feel goes, the best comparison I have would be the Electrum Model E. I think they feel very similar, except that the Model E feels a bit more dense and dampens vibration better especially around the edges. I noticed that hitting around the edges of the Hyperion CFS, it feels almost hollow or not very solid. To me, it's a very noticeable change in feel from the center. Obviously, the edges aren't going to feel like the sweet spot, but this was more of a change than I'm used to with most paddles. That's pretty much the only thing I've disliked about this paddle so far, and it's not terrible, but it's just not super enjoyable when you get a miss hit and you notice that the paddle feels quite a bit different than when you were hitting it in the sweet spot. So yeah, I don't really have any complaints, but it's also nice that it feels so similar to a paddle that I already really enjoy. For control, it was fantastic. I noticed no problems with my thirds, dinks, and resets. In fact, it felt great for all of those. Overall, I think this paddle leans more towards a control paddle than it does power, but as far as 16mm paddles go, I do think that it has more power than the average 16mm paddle. So for putaways, drives, and counterattacks, this paddle felt awesome. The serve was the only thing that I need to dial in more since it was consistently going out, but I think if I just do a couple more play sessions, that really won't be much of a problem anymore. So yes, while this paddle does have additional power, it wasn't so much that I felt like they sacrificed the control that I really like to have. 
The sweet spot feels quite nice. I was actually surprised how good the edge performance was. Even though I don't like how the edge feels when you hit it, the ball stays quite lively even when you're hitting the edge. Some paddles, it'll just die right away. And that isn't the case with this one. Instead of there being a big drop off in performance from the center, it feels like a smooth roll off from the center, which is nice for when you don't hit a shot perfectly. While I can't really give you much information about durability since I haven't used it long enough, I did notice that my edge guard is actually a little loose. You can't really move it a lot, but I can tell that it isn't held in place all the way. This could just be a first run production issue, or I may have gotten unlucky and got the one that wasn't glued all the way. Either way, I noticed it right when I took it out of the box and before I went to hit. So... I don't know. I wouldn't take this as big evidence of durability issues. I may have just gotten unlucky, but I would wait, you know, until things settle down and we have more data about how the durability actually is. I also want to call attention to this section just below the grip band on the paddle because some people thought this was a crack in the face. It isn't a crack, but it seems to be some kind of grip reinforcement into the paddle face. Either way, it's nothing to be worried about and seems to just be part of the paddle design. So overall, I'm impressed with this paddle. This is basically everything that I had hoped the Carbon 1 16mm was going to be for me, which is a paddle with great spin, long handle, elongated face, and a good sweet spot. The Carbon 1 did all of those things, except the sweet spot just wasn't that great for me. The Hyperion CFS seems to fix that. After my first play session with it, I could have easily used it to compete in a tournament the next day because of how similar it felt to my Model E. I haven't had many paddles where I can say that the transition has gone this smoothly. My opinion would be that if you don't need a paddle right now, hold off on buying one of these until we have more in-depth reviews come out. While I do think this is a very nice and impressive paddle, I think some of the hype of having it be Ben's paddle needs to calm down before we really get to see what everyone thinks about it. But if you are in the market to upgrade paddles and were considering something like an Electrum, Carbon, or an Engage, then I would heavily consider looking at this one as well. It has far superior spin to Engage, and for me personally, the spin results were higher than both Electrum and Carbon. It has the same or more power than the Carbon 1, but it also retains good control like I had on the Model E. I'm honestly considering switching to it, but I will need much more playtime to decide if I actually like it more than my Model E. If you do consider buying one of these, you can buy it from my friends over at Just Paddles, and I'll have an affiliate link in the description, which gives me a small kickback if you buy something from them, and that just helps support the channel so I can keep making content just like this for you guys. So there you guys go. Those are my first impressions on the new Ben Johns Hyperion CFS 16 millimeter. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to check out this one as well, where I do an in-depth comparison of Electrum, Engage, and Carbon to see which one you should buy.